بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمده و نصلی علی رسول الكریم اما بعد The next topic we're discussing is تقرار الامر So, as I said to you before, if you quickly recap, when we have the seer of Amr, there are a few issues that we need to understand. The first one is, we have the Amr, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam indirectly commands us. Then we have the Ma'mur, the person being commanded, and then the Ma'mur bihi, the thing you're commanded to do. Now regarding the seer of Amr, there's two topics of discussion. One already came before yesterday, Mujabuhu al-wujub. When you have a seer al Amr, uh, Amr is made up of two things, the Madda and the Hay'a. The Madda is to do with Khas, Mushrak, Mu'awwal, etc. And the Hay'a is Khas. The Haqiqi meaning of the Hay'a of a Sigatul Amr. The Sigha itself denotes wujub, that's Haqiqi meaning. If you have a context, it can then make a Majazi meaning. And the Majazi meaning can be all of those which you have studied in Balagha. The second topic of discussion is when you have a Sigatul Amr, how many times do you need to carry out that action? So the simple answer that we give here is. Now when you have the Sayyidatul Amr, the, uh, the, you have to carry out the action once. If I said, Hati Ma'an, get me some water. As long as you bring me water once, you say, well, you are Mumtathilan lil Ma'mur, you have fulfilled the command. That's the topic of today's discussion, that's the summary of today's discussion. And then in here we have a few questions, a few examples, and a few furu' based on this mas'ala. So, Al-Amru bil fa'li la yaqtadi takrar Al-Amru bil fa'l. Commanding a hukam, al amru bil fa'l, commanding a hukam, la yaqtadi at takrar. It does not necessitate takrar. It does not do what? It does not necessitate takrar. When you have an amr, and you say, if al qum ijlis, these things do not make takrar, it not necessitate takrar, meaning from there, without any external context, any external factors, we will not say, we will say the fa'l only becomes com- incum- incumbent once, but nothing more than that. Fahim? Therefore, there are a few furu'ah the based on this principle that when you have a command, it only, it only implies the command is due once unless there's external context. And you have a few furu'ah from the Hanafi fiqh which is based on this principle. So this is why we say, first example, لَوْ قَالَ تَلِّقْ إِمْرَأَتِي A person, let's say for example, he's, let's say, he's in another country before phones and messages etc. And he, let's say for example, he, he can't get to his wife anymore. So he said, I am here in another country, I can't get a visa, I can't come to that country, there's a war going on, my wife's there, I'm here, there's no point, just give a talaq on my behalf, I should carry on with her life. So he makes a wakil, you go into that country, you can go, I can't get there, so you give my wife talaq on my behalf, you're my wakil. So he said, talaq imra'ati, give my wife a talaq. فَتَلَّقَهَ wakil. Okay, so now the wakil has the husband, the wakil and the zawja. So the wakil says, okay. He goes and he gives the wife, when he reaches there, he gives the wife talaq. He says that Funa, your husband has made me the wakil to give you talaq, I'm giving you talaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up asbab and then he was able to come to the country. So then they got married again. ثُمَّ تَزَوَّجَهَا muwakkil. Who's a muwakkil? A zawj. A zawj. A zawj. The husband is a muwakkil, isn't he? He's the one that made the a zawj. Then somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up the way, he got his visa, they were able to come together. So he said, well, we were happy, but is that the, the, the reason I gave her talaq was because it was not practical. So I thought she can move on with her life. I got the visa, I can come now. So now I want to live together. So they got married again. So the husband got married again. Can the wakil get talaq again? He said, When he said, talaq imra'ati, how many talaq is he allowed to give as a wakil? You see, Al Amru, La Yakdi Al Amru, La Yakdi Al Takarar, La Yakdi Al Takarar. The Sayyidat Al Amr does not allow Takarar without context. So now he can only give one talaq, and he's already given that one talaq. There's no Takarar. So when they get married again, the Waqi can't be spiteful and say, okay, I'm going to give a talaq again, because you told me to give a talaq. Because when he said to give her talaq, you only allowed to give one talaq. Because Al Amru, La Yakdi Al Takarar, is an example of. Example number one of the Amr not necessitating or not allowing takrar illa fiba. Do not necessitate takrar. Is that clear? Do you understand the fara' based on the principle of takrar? Amr does not have takrar. We give this first ruling. Is that clear to everybody? Acha. Second example, similar example. Walau qala zawijni imra'atan. Nowadays we have all this that you have to, uh, you have to meet, you have to talk, you have like meetings over meetings. <laughs> My father got married. 
he, 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 as a young boy from the age of I think 14 or no, 15, he moved from India and he came to, he went to some place in Italy or something. He came, um, uh, he came to via ship in Italy. Then from Italy came to Southampton. They didn't like it in Southampton, so they got another boat and they went to Barbados. So he went to Barbados. So him and his grandfather in Barbados. And then a few years later, when he got the age of about 29, I don't know how old he was, he got to the age of what, marriage. He told his grandfather, okay, find me a wife. When you go back to India, find me a wife. Like anybody, <laughs> just find me a wife. Whoever you find, I'm happy. That's it. So there's always an imaratan, get married to somebody. There's no meetings, there's no discussion. You just find somebody, I trust your judgment, and inshallah, we'll make it work. So he said, Zawiz ni imra'atan. That's how they used to get married before. And, and there was less, less, uh, there's less divorce rates. Because why? People say, well, this marriage, we'll stick it through, through the thick and thin. Now is we have this deception of, there's always something better outside. There's always somebody better. We see hundreds and thousands of images of um, other more beautiful women. Or we have this deception that the other person's spouse is better. So we think, oh, you know, we become unsatisfied with what we currently have. Anyway, that's a sort of sidetrack. So he says, imra'atan. Get me married to a woman. How many nikah can he get? How many nikah can he do? La yatanawalu hada tazwijin marratan ba'da ukhra. You can't get from married to two, three, four. He says, zawijni imra'atan. So get me married to one woman. So that means only no takara. Get him married to one, then the hukam is finished. The tawkil is finished. The tawkil only applies to one situation. Walaw qala li abdihi tazawaj. لا تناول ذلك إلا مرة واحدة. Same thing. So his wife, if he says to his slave, he's put the word slave here because he's gonna have a few examples different coming up. If he says to his slave, get married, like you know, you have to have the permission of the master to get married. Get married. So he can only get married once. لا تناول ذلك إلا مرة واحدة. He can only get married once. So understand the principle. The principle is that سيرة الأمر. He only commits the fail compulsory once, and he only allows the fail once. So in tawkil. Of talaq or tawkil of nikah or tawkil or ijaza for uh, marriage in a slave situation, it only allows it to happen once. Achha. Why? Now he explains the reason. Why is this? Now this needs a bit of understanding. When you give a command to carry out an action, this is talabu tahqiq al fa'li ala sabil al ikhtisar. So the siqat al amr is ala sabil al It's a shortened version. Of seeking the fail from the mukhatab. That's what he's trying to say here. Al amru bil fail. When you have an amr of a fail, if al ijlis qum, this is seeking from the mukhatab to carry out the action in the shortest form. It's a sigha, Allah sabli ikhtisar. In a short form, in a short sigha, we carry out the command. Okay? And he give an example. For inna qawlahu idrib. When you say idrib, for example, this is mukhtasarun, this is actually. Shorter version of if al adarba. But instead of saying if al adarb, they say well, let's say adarb, they say idrib. So really, we said do adarb. Are you following? So if al adarb, so if al adarb is a bit long, the shorter version is this is idrib. So the siqatul amr is a mukhtasa, the shorter version of if al adarba. Understood? Wal mukhtasar min al kalam. والمطول سواء في الحكم. When you have a longer version of the speech or a shorter version of the speech, they both have to give the same meaning. They both give the same have the same hukam because not the same meaning. Obviously, there's a difference in terms of the ijaz and what matna they expresses, but in terms of the hukam, they will both give the same hukam. Does everybody follow this? Acha. So far, so good. Any questions so far? Acha. And then he says, also therefore, al amru bi darb. When you say if drib is amrun bi jinsi tasarrufin ma'lum. Tasarruf ma'lum meaning no, it means it's khas. It's a khas action. Tasarruf action. Meaning a darb. Darb is a, is a khas word. We know what it means. It means hit somebody. Ijlis is a tasarrufun khas. An, an action which its meaning is known. Everybody following so far? Is it clear to everybody? So when you say Al-Amru Bid-Darb so, Idrib Is an Amr Regarding the jinns Meaning carry The category Like if you categorize Af'al So you have basically A heading Af'al And then under Af'al We have different types of Fa'al Julus Darb Akl Shurb Etc So there's all different types Jinns is a type So when you say Idrib Idrib, so the command if al idrib 
is an amr to carry out the type, a jinns, of a known action. And this is darb, everybody knows what darb means. Irsil, everybody knows what ghasl means. Ijlis, everybody knows what jinns. So the, the madda is khas. The sigha, the hay'a, is, is khas in terms of the wujub. And it also, the, the madda itself does not necessitate takrar. Why? Because that, that madda, if al, is a mukhtasar of if ali darb. And ad darb is a jinns, do darb. That's what it means. Idrib, do darb. Ijlis, do julus. Sit, do sitting. For him. Now, because of this, wa hukmul ismil jins. When you have a jins, when you have a jins, when you have a word which refers to the category, there's two possibilities. Okay. Let's say, for example, we have the word um, alma. Okay. So what he's saying here, let's say alma, a talib, um, al kitab. What he's saying is that when you use a, a word which refers to the jinns, like it's referring to the whole category, there's two possibilities. One possibility is it refers to fard, one member. And it's also possible it refers to the jinn. So basically, if you look at it here, I'm not sure if it's 100% technically correct, but just for us to understand it, and this is coming to my mind right now, so I need to look into it more. But just so you can understand based on our balaga stuff. So basically, when you have, al, when you have if al adarb. It can be one, it can be istighraq. Correct? What does istighraq mean? Every single darb. Or it can be uh, just one, like one. We can have fardun mubham. It can be a fardun mubham. Any, any one darb. You remember that one, Banaga? Yes? For example, waja as sahara. So the magicians came. Yes? The magicians came. The magicians came. Correct? So now it means all the magicians, istighraq. Wal as inna al insana, istighraq, every single one. Or it can mean one, one member. Like for example, an akhaf ayakulahu zib, a wolf. So what he's saying here, when you have idrib, idrib is a mukhtasar of what? If al adarb. And the word adarb can either mean every single darb, do every single darb possible, or it can mean do what? Do one darb. Any one darb, afar mutlaq. Any one darb. Does this make any sense to you? Are you guys following what I'm trying to say? Okay, this, this needs a bit of a clarity. Let's, let's look at one example. And let's see if this one example clarifies or it, 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 um, it, we need more examples. Let's try it here. So, وَعَلَى هَذَا قُلْنَا إِذَا حَلَفَ لَا يَشْرَبُ الْمَاءَ Okay, this is an example. Let's say for example, he says here. He says, لَا أَشْرَبُ Again, he's gone off from the sake of the Amr. But he's trying to explain uh, here. So, la ashrabul ma. When you say al ma, now uh, ma has alif lam on it, correct? Now, when we say the word al ma, what kind of what's it referring to? Is either going to be istiqraq? So we say this is like a, a, this word al ma refers to the jinns of water, the whole the whole category of water. Now, this has two possible meanings. It can either refer to any fardul, fardul mutlaq, any single member of the this, jinns this of ma. So if you drink a single drop of water, is that considered as drinking water? Yes, that's water. A drop of water is ma. But at the same time, al ma could also refer to what? Istighraq. I will not drink all the water. Two possibilities. Are you following? Are you following? So, la ashrabul ma. So, he's not, he's not talking about amr here. Now he's giving an example of jinns. So, in here, the alif al ma, that has alif lam jinns on it. He's not talking about, about jinns. So, when we have, when the w word is used and it's referring to the category, there's two possibilities in here. What's the possibility number one? It refers to any single member or it refers to the entire category, like istighraq. For him? So, the default is the minimum. And the second is possible with niyyah. For him, sarih is what? The, 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 the minimum. And then you can say, well, if you have an intention, you can have the, the, the majaz meaning or the secondary meaning. So if he says, la ashrabu al ma'a, al ma refers to the jinns. So here we say, what, 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 what's, it, what's, the, what's the murad of al ma here going to be by default? 
What's a, what's a murad going to be? Anybody? Fardun mutlaq. Any, anything that is called ma. Yahnathu bi should be adna qatratin minhu. Even the smallest drop of water he consumed, we would say now he has done what? He has al ma. That, that, that comes under the word al ma. But because al ma can also have the meaning of istighraq. Law nawabihi jami'a miyah al alam. If you said no, I actually. In, I actually meant I will not drink up every single drop of water in the world because Ali Flam can be for istighraq. So we say here this can also be for what? This can also be sahat niyyat. If he had this niyyah, he was true. He actually meant this. That's between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he had this niyyah, which is possible because the word has this ihtimal. But the mutabadr, the, the more obvious meaning is the fard mutlaq, any one member. Do you understand? Yes? So based on this, He's saying here, if I said, La, he says here, for example, Id, Idrib. Or let's say, for example, he says here, uh, let's say he said, Ijlis. No, not Ijlis. Let's say, for example, um, Anfiq. Anfiq. Yes? Spend. So, Anfiq, what is this, this, what is this really? This is a abridged version of what? What's this abridged version of? If Al, what? If al al infaq the alif lam and al infaq can be understood to be what? A fard? Any fard? Or it can be interpreted to be what? All istighraq. This is the default. This is in the niyyah. Fahim? So when a person says, so if a person says now, this is why the default is if al, you refer to, if al means uh, yeah, salli, or for example, uh, she says, he said talliq, talliq imra'ati. What's talliq imra'ati really? If al, at talaq, yeah, if al taqliqa. What's the default, what's the possibility of the alif lam in here? Fard? And also, istighraq. So by default, how much, in, how much talaq would be intended? By default? One. And what's the istighraq to talaq? How many talaq is, is all together? The whole talaq? Three. Do you understand? Are you making sense? Yes? Another example now. Based on this, وَلِهَذَا قُلْنَا إِذَا قَالَ لَهَا If he says to his wife, تَلِّقِي نَفْسَكِ لَا I don't want to give talaq, I'm happy with you. But I'm giving you the choice. If you want to leave, you can leave, you can give yourself talaq. So تَلِّقِي نَفْسَكِ I am giving you the authority to give yourself talaq. فَقَالَ تَلَّقْتُ He said, she says, okay, fine, I don't want to be with you, I want to separate. تَلَّقْتُ I give myself talaq. Fahim? Now when he said, تَلِّقِي نَفْسَكِ What's talliqi nafsak mean? Ay if al at tatliq. Ya if al at tatliqata. Ya if al at talaqa. So by default, yaqa'ul wahidatu. How many talaqs will occur? One. Because if ali at talaqa is jinns, we say it refers to one fard. Any one fard is a, is a default. However, walaw nawa thalatha. Sahad niyatu. If he said, now when I said when I said to her talliqi nafsaki, I meant three talaq. That is correct. Why? Because talliqi nafsaki it actually means if al at talaqa, the default is one fard, which is the is the, is the default is fard, and it also has a meaning of istighraq. It can also mean every single member, and every single member is three talaq. So if you then so, and the word has ihtimal of both. So therefore, by default, we will say you can do both if ali at talaq. So both will take both possibilities. No niya, one talaq will take place. And if you said no, I meant three, you say that's possibility as well. The word has an ihtimal. If you made niya of this, then your niya is mu'tabar. So therefore, if she said talaq, then three talaqs will take place. Depending on what he gave her tawkeel of. Fahim. Does it make sense? Another example. Walaw kadalika law qal al akhar. Talliqha his din tawkeel. Yes? He says to somebody else, you give a talaq. 
يتناول الواحدة إن الإطلاق إن الإطلاق meaning without any near by by default by default one talaq he will give a tawqeel of one talaq ولو نوى الثلاثة صحت نيته that's also fine أتشا ولو نوى الثنتين if you do in terms of two talaq what is two is neither the default minimum is neither the istighraq so the word doesn't have the ihtimal you you you're making a meaning which you it's basically you're taking a meaning from the word which the word is not meant for meaning the alif lam in at talaq so when you say here if you say i had a knee of two we say well the word doesn't have the ihtimal so therefore it wouldn't count is that for, if i say for example get me i owe you 20 pound and i said oh, i meant 10 pound so the word 20 doesn't mean uh, if i say oh i owe him 100 pound correct I am a hundred pound. Correct? Now, Hakika is one hundred. And, and the default is a number takthir. The, 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 the majaz can be takthir between like, let's say about 80 to about 120 maybe, something around there. Because a hundred is like a takthir. So it's like ihtimal. But if you say, oh, a hundred, I met five pound. You say, well, that's not the meaning of hundred. The, the meaning hundred doesn't have the ihtimal. It has the meaning of a hundred exact. Or 100 is a D in English is used as a, a large number around 100. Similarly, if you say, say, Tallaqtu, ya Tallaqi Nafsaki, ya whatever the examples, ya Tallaqi Imrati, ya Tallaqtu, the Tallaq Nafsaki, it has two meanings. The one meaning is the default one for one, or the default is all. But here, coincidentally, the all is three. The word doesn't have the ihtimal of two. So two wouldn't count. You following? You understand why you can't give two Tallaqs by this niya? Do you understand everybody following? Yes, is it clear? However, if she's a slave, how many, how many, how many talaq can you give a slave girl? One and a half, but one and a half doesn't count. So you have to give it two. So if she's a slave and you, give, and you make intention of two, will that count? Yes, because two now is what? The istighraq. إِلَّا إِذَا كَانَتِ الْمَنْكُوحَةُ أَمَدًا Because if the slave girl is a mankuha, you can only give her two, one and a half, so she has half. So one and a half, but you don't count one and a half, you say two. So now here, two is not a number, two is the istighraq, the, the entire quantity. فَإِنَّ نِيَّةَ اثْنَيْنِ فِي حَقِّهَا نِيَّةُ بِكُلِّ جِنْسِ نِيَّةٌ بِكُلِّ جِنْسِ Because two is not a number here, two is the entire jinns. So we're not saying two or three, we're saying the entire jinns. And for the free woman, the entire jinns is three. And for a slave girl, is, for a slave girl, if you marry a slave girl, it's, the, the, the jinns is two. And this is why we have this ma'ana. Is it clear to everybody? وَلَوْ قَالَ لِأَبْدِهِ تَزَوَّجْ if he says to his, to his slave, slave tazawwaj. If he says tazawwaj imra'atan, how many can he marry? One. Yes, because now, it's now, this is, this is one. But if he says imra'atan, he makes maf'ul mutlaq mahzuf. Maf'ul bihi mahzuf. Tazawwaj, meaning tazawwaj if al azawaj. Now how many times can, how many times can a slave get married? Yaqa'u ala tazawwaj imra'atin wahidatin. It refers to one. Do one tazawwaj. Walaw nawathintayn sahad niyatuhu. Ay, tazawwaj kull zawaj Do every single zawaj which is possible for you And what's the maximum of a number of times a slave can get married? You're going to have two wives Half of the free So Sahad niyatuhu li anna thalika kullu al-jinsi fi haqq al-abd So in all these examples where We have a situation where we have the word if'al So if'al by default does not necessitate takrar Because it basically says It basically means if'al al-jins If'al jins al-fa'il and the jinns will fail will be either be one or all. And in most cases, can't be all. Then we go on to examples where it can be all, which is talaq, uh, talaq and, or tatliq or nikah. And in there, the numbers two and three are not what we're looking at. We're looking at minimum, maximum. One fard or the entire species, entire jinns. So one is a default, the one fard. And two and three is a maximum in talaq. And four is a maximum in nikah. And if you're a slave, you can have two talaq or two wives. But in the end, we're not looking at a number, we're looking at the full jinx. And the jinx changes according to who the person is. Does everybody understand this? Yes? Acha. Now here, there's a lot of text. Let me explain to you. Uh, I don't know if you'll get finished today, if not, I'll finish off tomorrow. So the question is, okay, very good, alhamdulillah. I prayed one for Jusalam my whole life and I'm done. Allah says, aqim is salata. So basically, aqim is salah. So I did one salah, finish, no more salah. Yes, yeah, so that question should only come about when the person doesn't have love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, when the person looks for excuses to try to lessen his ibadah. 
uh, that's a sign there is less of love. Our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not one where we like, um, uh, you know, you have like the, what do you call it? What do you have in America? The, ta- the, the tax people. And here we have the HMRC revenue. What do you have in America? What's it called? Inland revenue, inland revenue. What's it called in America? The ta- IRS. IRS. Basically, we want to pay as less as possible because they're taking our money. We don't want to give as less as possible. So whatever is legal, we give, whatever is our duty, we give that and the rest we want to keep for ourselves. That's not how our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Our relationship is one of love. Masri Tan Rahmatullah gives a good excuse. He says that you have to have love. For you to have istiqamah, usually istiqamah only becomes easy when you have love for something. So if you love knowledge, then it's very easy for you to have istiqamah, talabul ilm. When you have love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes easy to do istiqamah and ibadah. If you want to do khidmah, you want to serve somebody. If the husband loves the wife, the, life, the wife loves the husband, then doing acts of khidmah and service and being kind becomes natural because you love that person so automatically you can do istiqamah on, on, the, on, the, on the khidmah and the service and the ibadah and the ta'ah. So for us to be able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to have love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we'll be able to carry out. Yes. So then it's not like, oh, I have to pray for Jah. It's like, no, I want to pray for Jah. I want to wake up at Hajjud. I want to do dhikr. I want to read tilawah. Anyways, so if that question comes about, how come we have to be multiple salah? What do we say here? That the takrar we see in ibadat is not because of the amr becoming mukarr. The amr has takrar. It is because the amr has become mu'allaq with asbab. It's basically as if we're saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that basically the hukam actually means establish salah whenever the time for salah comes. So Allah given us one command, there's no takrar in this. And the command is what? Establish salah whenever the sabab of salah comes. Perform fast of Ramadan whenever Ramadan comes. Give zakah whenever zakah becomes obligatory. That's what the, the ma'na and the mafhum of all of these ibadat are. It's not because that one amr makes five times salah. The amr of aqim salah is actually or kutib alaykum siyam. Those amr are for not takrar. But because these awamir, these not amr, these ma'mur, these ma'mur bihi, these ma'mur bihi or ma'mur biha, these are linked to asbab causes. Whenever the cause, the reason comes about, then you have to perform the action multiple times. So basically, Allah is saying, Aqimi salah, establish salah whenever the time for salah comes. Establish the fast of Ramadan whenever the fast of Ramadan comes. And establish zakah whenever the, the zakah comes. Perform hajj whenever hajj becomes compulsory. There's only one compulsion. That's, so that's what we say here. Now, the takrar. In ibadah, it's not because of the takrar in the amr, it's because of the takrar of the asbab. And we go to that text tomorrow, inshaAllah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nasalli ala rasulihil kareem amma abad. So inshaAllah, let's go through the text which I was explaining yesterday, the concept. Thum wa la yata'atta ala hadha faslu takrari ibadat. He's saying that based on the expert we've explained before, you wouldn't get the ishqal, the first limit the masail, the section of takrar ibadat All of the ibadat, apart from hajj, they all become mukarrar in our lives Zakah, salah, hajj, sadaqatul fitr, they all become compulsory multiple times So if we are saying that there is no takrar in the amr, why are these ibadat compulsory multiple times? And I mentioned to you before, this is a text here فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ لَمْ يَثْبُتْ بِالْأَمْرِ That each individual Ibadah, which becomes compulsory multiple times, it is not because of the amr, rather it is because of the asbab. Each has a sabab. What are these asbab? They come in the end of the book. Allati yathbutu biha al wujub. That each ibadah has a sabab. So a simple example is the sabab of salah is a time. So what we say that fajr salah becomes compulsory because of the time. So what do we say here? Now the salah becomes composed because of time. So when the, 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 the fajr time starts, that starting of the time makes the, the salah compulsory. So that is why you have takrar. So everything that sabab comes, the amr, the, the, the ibadah becomes uh, wajib. So, lam yathbut bil amr. The ibadat are not becoming compulsory each time because of the amr. Rather, they become compulsory each time because of the sabab becoming mukarrar. And the sabab is what brings wujub. And let's go a bit more detail here. This is in a harsh, but they explain it here. So we have something called wujub. Something becomes compulsory upon you. 
But when it becomes compulsory upon you, it becomes compulsory in two aspects. One we call it nafsul wujub, that it is wajib upon you. And the other is called wujubul ada, that now you must carry it out immediately. Okay, for example, let's say for example we're doing a transaction. In this transaction, when you buy the product, the thamanul mabi'ah, the price or the, 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 the agreed amount of money to be paid becomes wajib upon the mushtari, the one who's purchasing the item. Now, as soon as the bay takes place, then it becomes compulsory upon the mushtari to pay the price. I mean, it's, it's his responsibility right now. But what if, when, the, but what is wujub ada? You have to complete it right now. So it's your responsibility, it's pending, it's like, it's like hovering, hovering above you. When the bay says, okay, pay me now. Now it becomes wujub, now you have to give it. So let's say, for example, you bought a product. I said, pay me later. Or pay me within the week. Or I'll, I'll tell you when to pay me. So the, it's nafsul wujub, the thaman, the price of the mabi, of this item being sold, is wajib upon the mushtari, is nafsul wujub. But when he says, pay me now, then that becomes what? Wujub al ada. So the wujub has two aspects. One is, it's, it's your responsibility, but it's not, you don't have to give it straight away. Or you don't have to fulfill it straight away. It's still waiting for the uh, time. Like, it's like, for example, an amana. You give somebody something of a trust. It's nafsul wujub. It's your responsibility to, to give it back. When you give it back, when you ask for it, that's wujubul ada. Does everybody understand this masala? Nafsul wujub and wujubul ada. Yes. For example, we have nafaqa, the zawj in Islam, the responsibility of the husband to provide for the wife. So as soon as you get married, then it is your responsibility to fulfill the nafaqa. And then nafaqa becomes wajib each time when she needs the nafaqa. Does everybody understand this? You follow? Achha. So far so good? Everybody following? Achha. Moving on, there's the next question. What he's saying here? So now this is how we will look at it. He's saying here, so the nafsul wujub comes about because of the sabab. And we're going to take the example of salah because it's easier. More details will come regarding the other asbab in the end of the book. So for example, the sabab of salah is awqatuha. Or is it awqatuha? Okay. So as soon as as uh, the sabab comes about, you get nafsul wujub. After nafsul wujub, you get the wujub. The, when do you have to fulfill it? By the amr. So after the sabab, the, the, the khitab becomes mutawajjah towards you. That now you have to fulfill this. Yes? It's called wujub al ada. So sabab comes about first, and after the sabab, the, the, the amr, the khitab from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, becomes mutawajjah towards the abd. We're just expressing as such so we can understand how to structure the rulings. That's what he's saying here. Wal amru li talabi adai ma wajaba fi dhimma bi sababin sabiq. So if we go back here, we have a sababun sabiq. But obviously, here's not much time between the, the two, but you have the sabab comes first. When the sabab comes, then the amr comes to say, okay, do it now. For him? So, wal amru, the amr sayga. And the khitab, the Amr Sayyidah or the khitab is to seek demand, fulfillment of what it becomes due in the dhimma because of the sabab sabiq. So you have the sabab come first, then the khitab, the Amr comes after that. So the Amr is basically just to say, okay, what was necessary and compulsory upon you before, fulfill that now. The Amr, la li ithbati aslil wujub. The Amr is not for the aslil wujub. And he gives an example. وَهَذَا بِمَنْزِلَةِ قَوْلِ الرَّجُلِ If somebody says, أَدِّي ثَمَنَ الْمَبِيءِ Give the ثَمَنُ الْمَبِيءِ أَدِّي نَفَقَةَ الزَّوْجِ The Qazi says, you need to forgive your wife the nafaqa. This Amr is there to do nafsu, do nafsu, uh, wujubu al-adha of the, of the, what is wajib fi dhimma. So, أَدِّي ثَمَنَ الْمَبِيءِ Give me the price of the mabi'. This is because, this is now an Amr to do what? There was a sabab before. What was the sabab? The bait. So the bait which took place before, this is the sabab of the thaman. And the amar is now making nafsul wujub. Not nafsul wujub, sorry, wujub al ada. Do you understand? So he's saying similarly, we have the sabab comes first, which is in salah time, in a, in a situation of salah, it's the awqatuha. So the awqat comes first, and after the awqat, you have the khitab. And the khitab then makes, uh, it makes nafsul wujub al ada. The sabab makes nafsul wujub. When the time comes, it becomes compulsory upon you. And when the khitab comes, it... Um, 
So another example you could give of this, um, like this off the top of my head, is that, for example, you could say, when a woman is in hayz and sawm. So when she is in hayz, the, the, the nafsul wujub comes about how? When the day starts. But the wujub al ada is not there then. There's no khitab to fast because she's in hayz. She will fast when she's, when she's in tuhar. So that because the, the, the nafsul wujub comes about, the khitab comes about afterwards, not immediately. Do you understand? Fahim? Yes? فَإِذَا وَجَبَتِ الْعِبَادَ بِسَبَبِهَا So when the ibadah becomes wajib because of sabab, thereafter the amr becomes mutawajjih, the amr sega comes upon him to fulfill what was actually wajiba minha alayh to, to make with that uh, whichever ibadah was composed in, in the zimma before, make that make the nafsul wujub, make the wujub al ada upon him. Is everybody following me? Let's so another example of nafsul wujub, wujub al ada. Let's say, for example, look, you go to the supermarket. When you go to the supermarket and you put the item on the till, yes? The person, the, the shopkeeper, not shopkeeper, if, if it's a shopkeeper, he's, a, he's the owner. If there's an attendant or person who's one of the, in the supermarket, lots of pe uh, people, they're the wakil on behalf of the supermarket. So when you place the item on the, on the till, that's your ijab, that I'm going to buy this item. As soon as they scan it, it's the qabul, the bait is tam. So now nafsul wujub is upon you, you have to pay for this. And at the end when they say, 99.99 sir, or madam, that's now what? Wujub al ada. now you have to give it there and then. So you have the sabab, is the bait, which became tam when they scanned it. That means that when they scanned it, that's, like, that's qayim maqam of, um, of, of Kabul. You done the ijab by placing the item on the till. I want to buy this. They scanned it. That means that I accept the purchase. Now, when that's done, now it becomes um, the bay is tam. And then when they give you the machine to, to scan your card or they ask you for the price, then that's now nafsul wujub of the, of the item. Fahim? So you have sabab and then you have sabab brings about nafsul wujub and the talab brings about wujub al ada. Okay, now there's another masala. The masala is okay, let's accept all of this. But there's still one amr, one sigha. So how can we get multiple? So you're saying, what we're saying so far, we say we have sabab. After sabab, what do we have? The, the khitab. But from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we only get, get one khitab. We've only heard the amr once. There's only one amr. Not, we haven't received an amr five times a day for our whole life. We've only got one or two sigahs in the Quran. It's, it's not for every single salah that we have in our lifetime. So what do we say? Go back to the beginning. We said that the Amr is a mukhtasar of a mutawwal. So for example, if I said for example, um, uh, let me give an example. Say for example, I say for example, Ati abawaika. What do I say? Yes. Okay, let's say for example, Sahib huma, sahib huma, be good to your parents. Sahib huma. Sahib huma fi dunya ma'rufa. Okay. This is sahib huma. And you put the ma'roof on it, it's maf'ul mutlaq. So I would, yeah, maf'ul mutlaq. So this is really if al, if al ma'ahuma musahabatan, musahabatan ma'roofatan. Yeah, al, if al, al musahabatan al ma'roofa. Is everybody following me? We said it's, it's, it's a mukhtasar. So really, if al ma'ahuma fi dunya al musahab al ma'roofa. Yes? Is that clear? Now, what do we say regarding this Alif Lam here? He says for jeans, isn't it? And we said you can either refer to a fard, or I can refer to a like istighraq, every single member. Correct? Do you know something? You can refer to one musahaba ma'rufa, or you can refer to all musahaba ma'rufa. So if now this, the Amr, the, the, is basically the maf'ul of if al and has alif lam, it's like alif lam on it. So we're saying here, Lamma kana yatanawalul jins because the amr includes the jins, the entire like istighra, basically all. So do all musahaba ma'rufa. Yatanawalu al jinsa ma wajaba alay. This is one amr. This note there's one amr. Yes, there's one amr. And there's no takrar of this amr. There's only one who comes. But this one who come encompasses all musahaba ma'rufa. 
So you don't have to have a separate Amr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each time to obey your parents. This one Amr includes the jinns of Musahaba al Ma'rufa. So every single Musahaba al Ma'rufa is Ma'mood bihi. Every single time, every single Musahaba al Ma'rufa. Does that make sense? So similarly, when the Khitab for Salah comes, it's if al as Salah, yeah, if al as Salah, the Alif Lam is for jinns. It includes every single Salah. So Lam al Amr, the Amr includes, the Nawalu includes, encompasses everything which is compulsory upon that person. Yes? Therefore, and I'll give an example here. Therefore, it's going on to say, وَمِثَالُ مَا يُقَالْ إِنَّ الْوَاجِبَ فِي وَقْتِ الظُّهْرِ The wajib at a time of dhuhr, who was dhuhr? Yes? فَتَوَجَّهَ الْأَمْرُ لِأَدَاءِ ذَلِكَ الْوَاجِبِ So what's happened? What's the sabab? The time of dhuhr. That will come first. After the time of dhuhr, the sabab will happen. So because of the time of dhuhr, that's, that's nafsul wujub. Immediately after nafsul wujub, you will have tawajjah al-amru. And amr will come. لِأَدَاءِ ذَلِكَ الْوَاجِبِ to bring the, make that uh, uh, wujub al ada compulsory. So far so good. So when the time comes, so in al wajib fi waqt, so the, the waqt of zuhar is nafs is nafsul wujub. As soon as the time comes, is nafsul wujub. Then you have an amr. This is uh, uh, wujub al ada. This is wujub al ada. So far so good. Thumma idha takarrar al waqt. So next day's time of zuhar comes. Takarrar al wajib. The wajib becomes compulsory again, another wajib. فَيَتَنَاوَلُ الْأَمْرُ The first amr, the very same amr, الْأَمْرُ الْأَوَّلْ The first amr sayga will also include will also include the next day's zuhr, and the third day's zuhr, and the fourth day's zuhr, and the fifth day's zuhr. فَيَتَنَاوَلُ الْأَمْرُ الْأَمْرُ ذَلِكَ الْوَاجِبَ الْآخِرَةِ Why? زَوْرُورَةَ تَنَاوُلِهِ كُلَّ الْجِنْسِ الْوَاجِبَ عَلَيْهِ سَوْمًا كَانَ أَوْ سَلَاتٍ because zarura, because of the necessity of including the entire jinns, whatever the fail is. For example, sumu means is equal to if al saw, and this can either be referred to one fard, like in talaq, if ali talaq, one talaq, or I can refer to the all jinns, all of them. So we're saying here refers to all of them. Now when it refers to all of them, that means that this saw, if ali is this, we say that sumu will apply to Will, that this khitab of sumu will refer to every single time the sabab comes about. So, for example, now, kutiba alaykum as siyam. So that's, that's another way of saying sumu. Fahim? So, now when the first of Ramadan comes in 2024, in 2024, what's going to happen? The kutiba alaykum as siyam siyam will apply then. When the second of Ramadan comes 2024, 1445, what will happen? We will say the same kutub alaykum as siyam becomes because that, that kutub alaykum as siyam is if ali sawma and as is jinn. So we refer to every single time the sabab, the sabab comes about. So every time the sabab comes about, that sigha will become mutawajjih there. It's not a takrar, but that same sigha applies. It's not, it's not repeating. It's, it's applying each time. It includes, that first sigha includes every time the sabab comes about. It's not takrar, it's just, it applies to that. Is that clear? فَكَانَتْ فَكَانَ تَكْرَارُ الْإِبَادَةِ So in reality, the ibadah فَكَانَ تَكْرَارُ الْإِبَادَةِ متكررة. Those ibadah which occur multiple times occur via this بِتَكْرَارِ الْأَسْبَابِ The asbab becomes mukarrar Whenever the asbab becomes mukarrar then the first khitab is also applicable to that sabab now, that location So for example, let's say Fajr one after, Zuhr one, Fajr one after Bulugh becomes compulsory because of the time when the time comes, then we say, well, that first khitab also applies here. Fajr two after bulugh. When the time comes, it becomes nafsul wujub, and the khitab al awwal applies here as well. Because it sallu means if al as salah, and as salah includes all the salawat. So this is how the ibadah al mutakarrara becomes compulsory. Not because amr itself necessitates takrar. Fahim? So amr does not necessitate takrar, but the takrar comes about because. Whenever the khit whenever the sabab is there, the khitab will awwal applies there as well. So you takarraru bi asbabiha. They become mukarrar because of the asbab, not because they are multiple, the, the, the amr necessitates multiple times. And somebody is asking me this morning, that what about if you have a shart? If you have a shart as well, it's the same thing. The shart is basically like sabab. In kana kada faf al kada. So every time that amazing, do this action every time the sabab comes about. So the shart as well will come out. 
Does everybody understand this? Yes. Now you say, well, where's all this coming from? All of this is basically here to codify and understand all the nusus and to codify everything so we're able to understand, okay, when do we have to do compulsory, when is it compulsory, when can we do qada, when can we do ada? Yes, none of this is like, you know, uh, this is all ishtihad and it's all to this explaining how we've understood the nusus so we can apply rulings and according to this. But it's all excess, not excess, because then when you have these kind of rulings and systems and understanding, we're able to then apply different for different rulings and different um, uh, what do you call it? We're able to understand how to different fatawa, different situations, circumstances. Now, how to, how to understand the muslah? When is it wajib? When is it not wajib? If it's wajib, then how do we do qada? When do we not do qada? Etc. Etc. Is everybody following? Yes. No. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept. Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Kana shudu la ilaha illa anta wa nasaqfiru kana tuubu ilayk.